Hello, everybody, and I was going to say welcome back to Stellaris. I mean, we kind of are welcoming you back to Stellaris here because that did, in fact, win the poll. But let me hop over to... That is not the correct display. Let me hop over to the correct display capture here. You can uh, see some of my code there. That that's that's great. It doesn't really matter. That's fine. We're gonna hop over to the correct display here. You can see that Stellaris definitely won, and I was going through these theme ideas here. There's a lot of neat stuff here. I definitely can't do all of them. And then I came across Edvin Erickson's idea here. A democratic egalitarian militarist aiming to liberate the galaxy. I love this idea. You will be liberated. Resistance is futile. <laughs> This is an amazing concept. I love this, and I think that is what we're going to end up doing. So let's go ahead and get started on that. There was also a surprising number of people asking to play as humans. That that kind of surprised me. But uh, let's just go ahead and hop into a new game here. And we are not going to play as Salad. Hey, here's the Ethiopian Empire. Uh, we're going to create a new empire here for sure. Because we know that we need to be democratic... And we need to be egalitarian militarists, right? So the question is, are we fanatic egalitarians? Or are we fanatic militarists? We have three ethic points. So if we just do this, that leaves us an ethic, an ethic, ethnic, I was going to say ethnic point. Apparently that's very difficult to say. It's an ethic point, not an ethnic point. Ethnicity has nothing to do with this. Interesting that this gave us the exact same leader to start with as the Ethiopian one. Uh, we're probably going to change that. Okay, so for now, I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, that ship fire rate is awfully good, isn't it? So maybe fanatic militarist, egalitarian. We could do it this way. And uh, uh, essentially, we would be... Oh, I, I wanted to go back here. We would be going for, like, Space USA in this case, right? Where we're trying to, like, project democracy across the galaxy by force if necessary. And it will be necessary. We will make it be necessary. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, we could definitely go with a human appearance here, or human-ish. Um, honestly, I think that in terms of art style, because there were quite a number of requests to play as humans, so we could do that. Um, in terms of art style, I do think that this one looks better, just generally. I think that this one is just a little more dated looking in terms of art style. And this just has a little higher definition. So we could definitely go for that. And as far as our actual ruler goes, we would... Uh, it, it wouldn't really matter what sex we are. I wish there was a uh, random button. A species name is required. Yeah, that, 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 would, that would help. We, we don't really care, though, I don't think. It doesn't really matter. Like, it, it really, really doesn't. We're egalitarian, right? So in theory, that's going to change a lot. But we're going to go into our species name here, and let's see. Ah, okay. So we don't want all leaders to be male or female. We could make them be in indeterminable. I mean, sure. But we're going to leave it at default, which is it can be whatever. We're egalitarian, so that works. Um, we're not going to be the Vryn. We are going to be. We are going to be human. This is what you guys wanted. So the plural of humans is humans. I, I th this is, yes, this, this is how you type. Th that is our plural. Definitely. That, that is how that works. And then our adjective would just be human. I, I like how our pl plural is who mans. What is this? Quirks? Th that, that's, that sounds right. I mean, we could pronounce that with a long A. Who mans. There we go. Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> Oh, please don't sue me, CVS. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab definitely, um, in terms of name lists, we're going to go with Humans UNE. Okay, so that's going to be absolutely correct. ISS is not going to be what we want. We could go with like UES, 
like United Earth ship or something like that. That's kind of like early TOS Star Trek feeling. I don't know. And that's kind of the feel we're going for here, aren't we? I feel like we are. So like UES. Cool. I think that works decently well. As far as our traits go, this is going to be interesting. We're going to try to role play this a bit. And I'm not going to try to min-max for getting the best outcome here. So, we are egalitarian, fanatic militarists, and democracy, right? So, with that in mind, what do we want to go for here? I think that traditional doesn't work super well. Communal doesn't really either for what we're looking for. We could go for solitary, but I don't think that's it either. I mean, a lot of these aren't really what we're looking at, are they? Like most of these could apply to what we're what we're going for. We're going for like a very diverse, almost federation-y system here. So in that case, we could simply go for like intelligent, and then we would need a negative trait which would be something along the lines of slow breeders, perhaps, to offset our kind of probably going to be ridiculous stats, if I had to guess. We could also be non-adaptive. I feel like that's not too bad. Make it so that we're more interested in terraforming. That's not the worst thing. And then in terms of what else we've got here, consumer goods upkeep reduction would be amazing. But we've got three points left. We can go for two two points. So something like agrarian or thrifty is pretty good. Honestly, that kind of works. If we're going for like the Star Trek style Federation, not so much. But that's not exactly the Federation that I'm going for. Like the... TNG era federation. I'm more going for like the really early TOS federation before they even knew what the federation was. <laughs> that's that's kind of what we're going for here, I feel like. So we've got one more pick that we can do. We can take charismatic and that gives you amenities from jobs. Huh. But that does kind of fit with what we're going for because we're, we're going to do some attempting people to to convert over to democracy diplomatically, right? So we'll, we'll want to be something like this. I think that's reasonably okay. We're not going to grow super fast. So basically this is saying colonization will be tougher for us. So that's good to know. We are going to be starting on Earth in the solar system with a continental world. Uh, Continental is this one. Yes, it was correct. Homeworld name will be Earth. There we go. And star name will be Sol. Fantastic. For our city appearance, we'll be going with the humanoid city, as I tend to match my city appearance with my species type. For our origin, we're going to be going for... Let's think here. A prosperous unification might not be a terrible way to start here. That'd be fairly thematic with what we're going for. Keep in mind though, we're not going like full on federation. We're going to be annexing people into our faction, right? We're going to be bringing them into our democracy, not creating an overarching democracy. We've done a federation playthrough before, and that's not going to be the goal here. Okay, so we're going to head down. And let's just see if there's anything else that we're really interested in. Yeah, we'd start as a, a federation with that one. Like I said, I don't actually want a federation. I want to annex things and force them into our ethics. That's, that's the idea here. So I think that Prosperous Unification might be the way to go. We start with an additional four pops and an additional two districts, which will help offset our slow early growth. So we'll go with that. Government and Ethics we already set up, although we haven't picked our civics yet. Beacon of Liberty, I think, is definitely something that we go for. 
No doubt about that. Citizen service, I don't think so. Let's see. We could go for a diplomatic core. Idealistic foundation. That actually sounds good. We'll go for that. So we're going to get plus 15% monthly unity and minus 15% empire size from pops. We're going to get plus 10% citizen pop happiness. Cool. So advisor, we could go for either the egalitarian advisor, which I don't think we've ever had before, or the militarist advisor. It is a good day to die. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go for militarist. It is a good, it is a, it is a, it is a cry havoc. And let's slip the dogs of war. Let's see about egalitarian. You seem overworked. Have you considered joining a union? Democracy sure is an endless struggle. You seem overworked. Do not be afraid to exercise your individual right to free thought. Please take a moment now to practice. This is very thematically appropriate for what we're going for. Okay, so we're going to go for that. The Human Star League. Huh? I like it. It's got that, like, Battletech feel to it. <laughs> we're not going for a Battletech feel, but we're going to go for Human Star League anyway. Perfect. As far as our flag goes, I don't think we're going to go for, like, a, a corporate one. Hmm. Something like the uh, UFP logo? That's very close to what that is. Uh, we could instead... See if there's something down over this way. Hmm. Honestly, we could go with something like this. I usually like to go with light colors for the colors because I find it just pops on the map better. So I would probably end up having our primary color be something along the lines of a blue or a green. I think in this case, we're going to go for blue because we are from the blue planet. And the question is, can I tell blue from purple? I I'm kind of colorblind, so uh, I, I hope that's blue. I think that's blue. I assume so. And then we're going to go for like a, uh, that's definitely purple. We're going to go for maybe something kind of like this. Hmm, that's, that's almost good. That's not bad. We'll do it. I do wish that you could change the uh, emblems material that would, and, and change the color of that. That would be nice, but it is what it is. This is the best we can do for now. Okay. Our ship appearance is definitely going to be humanoid in appearance. There's a lot of aliasing on this screen. It's probably due to the UI scaling, but yeah, in 4K, there's a lot of aliasing there. Interesting. So that's our Corvette. That's our Destroyer. That's our Cruiser. That's our Battleship. That's our Titan. That's our Construction Ship, Colony Ship, Science Ship, Citadel, Colossus, Juggernaut. Cool. As far as our ruler goes, we can just roll up a, a ruler here. It, I don't think it really matters. I'm, I'm just going to roll a 50% chance here to be fully egalitarian. It started off on female, but let's just go ahead and go to random.org. And if I switch over to display capture again here, then we can see if it's over 50, then we will have it be female. If it's under 50, we'll have it be male. Okay. Looks like we're starting female. Fantastic. Hooray, egalitarian. Okay. So this is fine. As far as this goes, I mean, we can just kind of have this be completely random. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to click and then stop. I'm not even looking at what the, uh, what it is. What do we get? That's interesting. Okay, sure. We'll go with that. Sounds good. So we are human. We are humanoid. Cool. We're going to save the human star league here and then we'll be done. Now I'm going to reset this all back to default just to make sure that this is not anything weird. We're going to go for a maximum size galaxy, as we tend to do. And I like the elliptical galaxies with the, the, the way that hyperspace lanes are right now. I feel like 15 AI empires is probably decent. 
But we could have that be randomized. Take that up to like 10 to 20. Something kind of like that. As far as advanced starts go, four is fine. Four fallen empires, three marauder empires. I'm going to leave most of this at default. Main thing that I'm going to change here is the difficulty. I like to have scaling difficulty, and we're going to take this up to... We could put this at Grand Admiral. I've been feeling like Grand Admiral isn't as fun as it used to be, though, because the AI is a lot more aggressive these days than it used to be. One thing we could do is we could leave it at Grand Admiral difficulty and turn the AI aggressiveness down. But I've been feeling like the AI is just... It's, it's a little too aggressive on Grand Admiral Normal difficulty, at least in terms of the way I want to play this. So this will be fine. We'll, we'll turn the AI aggressiveness down a little bit here, but leave it on Grand Admiral so that when they do attack, it should be pretty threatening. So that should all be fine. And we will leave Iron Man off as we tend to do for series games. So that will be absolutely fine. Two gu guaranteed habitable worlds sounds good. The rest of this all looks fine. But yeah, with our previous, like, four games that I've played at Grand Admiral Normal, it's just the AI constantly attacks us. And I, I just don't think that's particularly fun. I like to have periods of peace. I like to have the AI attack sometimes. But I like to have periods of peace in Stellaris. I just think it's more fun that way. So we will go ahead and play this. Beautiful. And now the question is, will we unpause in this first episode? The answer is almost certainly yeah, looking at the timing. So that'll be good. Let's get on in here. In the eons, since the first primitive human communities took shape in the meadows and forests of Earth, our civilization has spread and prospered. As we advanced through the ages, many of our earliest nation-states suffered greatly from the constant power struggles between the military and civilian institutions that governed society. A compromise was reached in a new form of government, where one could not exist without the other. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the Human Star League have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Cool. So we'll go ahead and begin this, and what do we have for our initial techs? Hard to pass up administrative AI. We'll go with that. Planetary unification is pretty good to start with. That lump sum of unity to get you going. Plus it gives you 5% more unity. All, all, all things considered, that's not bad. Society research from researchers and pop growth speed are all incredibly good as well. We wouldn't go for hydroponics farming here. We'll definitely get these both at some point in the future. Hopefully soon. I'm going to go for planetary unification to start with. So for Wei Lin here, we will go ahead and... Hmm... Bit of a tough call here between mining station output and engineering research, but I think we're going to take the research. Cool. So that'll be fine. I definitely want to... Let's see, we're at zero unity right now. I immediately want to start producing, or almost immediately, want to start producing a second science trip. But first off, let's take a look at where we are in the galaxy. Right on the edge. Okay. Okay. It should be a somewhat crowded galaxy. So we know for a fact, at this point, that we have a choke point here and choke points here. Well, like here and here. Okay, we're going to head out this way first towards Barnard Star. We'll survey that system. And as far as our construction ship goes, this is the Ganges. And, uh, naming construction ships after Deep Space Nine runabouts tradition continues, I guess. <laughs> the UES Ganges here is going to be grabbing, I think, let's see, we've got, is that the only minerals here? It is. So we definitely go for the minerals here. Then we go for the science after that, but we'll have to wait for minerals to come in. Now on our capital, what do we have going on? Huh. So this expires in 7,200 days. That's interesting. The economy has been booming. Indeed. So, looking at this, this looks pretty decent as is. 
We do have an available job. We can start clearing tile blockers once we have a little bit more energy credits, but energy credits in the early game are so much freer than they used to be. So that's great. I think we are now ready to unpause. So let's go ahead and do so. I'm going to bump this up to fast speed for the moment. At this stage of the game, fastest feels a little uncontrollable to me. So we'll just stick it fast until the game starts to slow down, which it definitely will. That's just the way Stellaris works. So that'll be fine. Okay, we can see that there's no connection out over here. So choke points are now here and here and possibly here, depending on complete. this. There's our mining station done. The Ganges finished that on up and we'll head back over to Mars. Cool. So we'll get ourselves some physics research there. And that'll be great. We do need some science chips here. And we should start getting one soon. Oh, wow. A precursor already. We're going to get back to that in a moment. But we're going to start queuing up a science chip right now. There we go. The UES Von Braun crew are eager to report that they've uncovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring species on Barnard Star 1, who appear to have inhabited the planet some 7 million years ago. While it is unclear why the species who called themselves the Gruner disappeared from the Barnard star system, our scientists have isolated a promising archaeological dig site on their planet. Perhaps further study will y yield more clues. So yeah, I'm definitely surprised that we already found our precursor. That's a little wild. Okay, and there's that archaeological site. We will get back to that. Definitely. Cool. Well, we did find alien remnants. Yep. Definitive proof of intelligent, purposeful alien activity at some point in the past. We may still be alone now, but we are at least not the first to be so. We are definitely not alone. <laughs> I can tell you that. We are definitely not alone. Our recent encounter with alien lifeforms has reignited and made suddenly more urgent the old debate on how we should approach contacting any potentially intelligent alien civilizations we may meet. While some advocate focusing on establishing friendly relations as quickly as possible by contacting them with a message of peace, others advise caution, pointing out that we cannot know whether alien minds bear ill intent towards us, and that it would be unwise to let them know too much about us before it's necessary. A third, more radical group push for preemptive action against them. With the security of all humans at risk, they say, I'm never going to not giggle at that. We dare not hesitate to take whatever measures necessary to gain the upper hand against any potential Xeno threat. I love how it started off as a typo, and then I was just like, it's just humans, though. <laughs> it's great. Okay, so um, we could set it to proactive. The question is... I, I think we will greet the Xeno with open arms. We have to determine whether they need to be liberated or not. Right? Pro tip, everyone needs to be liberated. Even if they're democratic, fanatic, militarist, egalitarians, they're not the right brand. So they'll, they'll, that'll have to change. We shall greet the Xeno with open arms. Okay, cool. So there's that done. Construction complete. And the Ganges finishes up over Mars. We're next going to head to Mercury and build a mining station there. Okay. So, our UES scout here, very imaginatively named, needs a scientist, and we're going to recruit Elsa Meyer here, who's got decent survey speed. We're going to head out this direction and survey out here so that we can see where our choke points may end up being. After Barnard Star, we are going to head out this direction with the Von Braun. So that'll be fine. And so far, we appear to be off to a decent start. Our consumer goods are maybe a little bit suspect. That's something we'll have to think about. Complete. The Ganges is now done constructing, and the first place it's going to be able to go is going to be Barnard Star. And we obviously, we always, always take Discovery first. It's just too good. I can't give it up. Done. 
Okay, and with that, it is about time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we are going to continue our exploration. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Kazerol, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Kadra, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.